Howdy folks! Now there's tons of videos going around the internet claiming that you can rejuvenate a dead 12 volt battery using basic household items. Well, I've got a dead 12 volt battery here and those same items. So today we're going to find out, do they actually work? And hopefully, by the end of this, either I'll have a good 12 volt battery to put back in service again or I'll save you a couple of days of wasting your own time. So let's go ahead and get started. Take the first reading. 0.88 volts, so she is completely dead. Okay. If we lift off the caps, we can do a visual inspection on the cells. It looks like it's in pretty rough shape in there. There's a lot of corrosion and obvious damage. So we'll go ahead and add the Epsom salts and see what difference that makes. To make the magnesium sulfite solution, we've added one liter of deionized water into the pot. And we've measured out 200 grams of Epsom salts of magnesium sulfite, which we're going to add to the solution until it dissolves. So you can see there that the salt is starting to dissolve into the deionized water nicely. It's nearly completely clear, so we'll just give it another minute. Now that the salt is fully dissolved, we can transfer our solution back to our measuring jug. All right, so, so we've removed about a liter of acid in total from the battery across all six cells. This takes a few minutes, so we're just going to skip on ahead. So now that is all the cells filled once again. Alright, so with all that done and out of the way, now we need to charge it up. We don't have a plug-in charger, so we're going to use the next best thing we have in the place. The diesel. Almost immediately we can see gentle bubbling beginning within the cells, so we'll leave it charge up for a few hours and come back to it later. It's now two hours later, the bubbling seems to have eased off a bit. And it's gone from 14 down to 10 amps flowing through. 3.9, not great, but it's better than it was. When I first took it off charge we were just under 6 volts and only 3 of the cells were bubbling so I'm going to have a guess that maybe 3 of the cells are completely inactive and 3 of the cells are working because it's a 12 volt. So we're going to take a little 3 volt motor and see what happens. See this a bit better. Well, look at that. Okay, so after a couple of hours of charging, we were able to bring it up to about 6 volts, which rapidly dropped down to just below 4. Now, we were able to run our little fan burner on it, which is a 3 volt motor, but that's not going to start any cars anytime soon. So, we're going to call that a fail and we're going to move on to the next experiment, which is the bicarbonate of soda. So we went ahead, emptied out all the acid into a suitable container. Always a good idea to throw on some PPE when you're doing this, as if it splashes on you, it'll give you a nasty burn. The acid came out pretty clean looking to be fair, so it wasn't too bad. Next thing we had to do is just top up the cells again with some distilled water and the bicarbonate of soda. Try to get it equally into each cell as much as possible and then top them up all the rest of the way with the distilled water once again kind of see that it's reacting nicely in there so um, it's definitely doing something every 15 minutes I would come back out and re-agitate the solution try to make sure that it got thoroughly around all the cells about an hour and a half later it stopped reacting altogether so I decided to go ahead and empty it all out into a big bucket the stuff that came out was pretty nasty so it did seem to clean things up a bit inside of there 
After that then wash it all out with the garden hose to make sure that there be no further acid base reaction. Once it was emptied and dried the cells did seem to be a bit cleaner although there was still a bit of gunk in there. Once all that was done I took the old acid and filtered it through a rag and a funnel to try and clean it up as much as possible. We took the clean acid that we removed on the first experiment and used that to fill the cells first, trying to distribute it evenly between them. Once that was gone we used the filtered acid to fill up the cells the rest of the way, leaving about a quarter of an inch from the top of the port to the liquid level. After that we stuck it back on charge for five hours to see what would happen. Getting some action there now. Let's see what sort of current the battery has actually taken. It's taken roughly 37 amps, which is the highest it's taken so far. So there are signs of improvement in the cells. Let's leave it on for another little while and see what it does. She took up to 50 amps at one stage charging and we had some bubbling and smoking coming out of the cells. So let's take a reading and see what difference it's made. Point one. It's worse than it ever was. <laughs> okay, so it's time to come clean and explain how they did it. Dissolving salt in water creates an electrolyte solution. Putting that electrolyte solution into the battery creates a false reading. If I put two probes of the multimeter into this jug of Epsom salt solution here, I'll get a voltage reading. Doesn't mean there's any power present. So does it work? Absolutely not. It's a complete and utter scam. Don't waste your time. Just go out and buy yourself a new battery. And take your old battery down to the scrapyard where they might give you a couple of quid for it. Oh, and incidentally, don't put vinegar anywhere near the inside of that battery. Vinegar is acetic acid, and when you mix acetic acid with sulfuric acid, it creates paracetic acid, which is explosive when moderately heated. <laughs> so don't do it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.